Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, V1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use contrast paint to get yourself an excellent looking Grey Death Legion that matches the cover art on several of these books that I used for inspiration. For paints, I use mostly Vallejo. We've got a Wolf Grey, a Pro Acryl Warm Grey, Charcoal, the contrast paint is Basilicanum Grey, and then I've got Scarlet Red, a Red, and a Silver, or a Gunmetal is fine. For brushes, I've got a Double Zero, a Zero, a, one, a Three, and a makeup brush for dry brushing, and I've also got these little Q-tips that I'm going to use to fix any mistakes. All right, I've already primed my miniature in white, and then I've given it a base coat of Wolf Gray. You don't have to do this if you want to leave it white or just do a primer gray, that's fine. The reason I chose Wolf Gray is that there's a bit of a blue hue to it, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of break up the dreary gray color. For the stripes, I'll be using Pro Acryl's Dark Warm Gray, and I'm gonna grab my Zero Brush Synthetic it's basically a workhorse here, and I'm going to start applying the stripes. If you reference back to the artwork that I did, you don't need to do as fine of a stripe pattern if you're not willing to, or it's just not something you're comfortable with. Really, the only things that I'm looking to do while I'm making these stripes is to get the paint into the recesses and the cracks because these new models definitely have some more depth to the detail. And I'm also trying to not inadvertently follow panel lines so that it looks like a more natural camouflage pattern. It's a typical tendency to just get to the edge of a panel and not want to carry it over just a little bit more and keep those rounded surfaces, so just keep that in mind. If you do look at the artwork again, you can see that there's one of the patterns that has a lot broader stripes. So if that's something you want to do or you don't maybe have as fine of a brush as this, perfectly okay. I do recommend you leave quite a bit of the gray or the white base coat showing because that's really where you're gonna get the transition contrast from the dark stripes to the lighter areas between the steps of the contrast paint. You'll see it as, a, as it goes on later, but trust me, leave enough of the lighter color showing more than you probably would think. I've just diluted my paint a little bit with just some water from the brush, I'm not doing too much, and I'm just gonna work my way around these panels trying to find a, a nice organic pattern that somewhat mimics the artwork. As you progress, take a look at the areas that you've already done. There may be a couple of spots where there might be a missed area. You know, just do a little bit of cleanup here and there. Don't get too wrapped around it though. Like I said, this is a very free flowing, easy going, relaxed type of uh, application of paint. You shouldn't be too stressed out over this at all. It's really the, the basis of the paint job, but it's not as critical. And it's not, the entire paint job is not gonna hinge on whether or not you go one way or the other with the stripes. You can see here, this is the result after doing the entire model. I think it looks really neat. Obviously, we're gonna make it look a lot better once we start adding some shadows. I've grabbed some Vallejo Oily Steel. You can use a silver or gunmetal or anything like that. And I'm just gonna pick out a couple areas I wanna have metallic. The muzzle brake on the end of the auto cannon, the intake vents. Those are just some high profile, easy to see areas. And it's gonna just add a little bit of a breakup to the camouflage. Now I know obviously camouflage would be something you'd want to keep minimized for the, the shininess and things like that, but because we're working at this scale, we're adding just these little pops that are going to accentuate the paint scheme because the grays are, are really difficult to make look good and a lot of things can be lost in, in grays, especially at this scale. So trust me on this, if you have a few areas that you just add a little bit of metallic and later on we're going to use a little bit of red to do some more details. It's really going to help break that up, but at the same time, it's going to look really neat as a camouflage, but it's not going to be so overwhelmed by other little pops of color that it's going to look out of place. So I'm just going to go and pick out, like I said, the vents, a couple of spots on the joints, you know, just minor areas. It's not as many as I would do on a, say, a yellow or a red paint scheme because the contrast isn't going to be there. The darker joint is going to be lost in the dark stripes the darker areas that I would normally do on say gun barrels and things like that. It's just not as effective. So keep that in mind. You don't have to do this. It's just something that I'm showing you that you can do and things to consider as you work your way through your paint job. I also decided to paint a little bit of black onto the foot. Actually it's charcoal, but uh, dark colors on the underside just to prevent it from having a light color. I know it's most likely not going to be seen, but I just did it anyway. Here's the result with just those metallic details done, and you can see it just adds a little bit of variation. 
Now it's time to get brave with the contrast paint. I've got the Basilicum Gray. I've shaken it up. I have an agitator in the bottle to make sure all that media gets mixed. And I've got my large synthetic number three brush with a decent point to it. I'm going to use this to apply the contrast paint. I like to keep it from a top to bottom type of process, starting out heavily at first with the application and working that paint on the model downward as I go. I'm not trying to be fast and sloppy. I am being deliberate as I apply the paint and you do need to push it into the recesses and other areas because contrast paint sometimes is because of its consistency won't go into the recesses as say a normal wash would. So keep that in mind. The nice thing about this, this gray at least is out of the bottle, it's gonna look darker than you probably want it to be. As it starts to dry, it will lighten up and mute out, which is good, but you do need to prevent it from pooling. And if there's areas that you think look too dark or too heavily coated, now is the time to start moving that paint away from those areas. And you can see me doing that gradually as the gun barrel was starting to accumulate some and some of the areas on the top sides of the torsos. It's all, basically it's all a process that you just have to do as you do it. And I know that's not very reassuring if you've never done it before, but trust me, when you see a little bit of paint building up in an area, all you need to do is take the brush and move it into another area. And if it's already there's already paint on those other areas, use your paper towel, dab some off of the paintbrush, and go back and wick some more away. Try to keep a wet, continuous edge. So as you work out, I'm gonna go from shoulder to shoulder, and then I'm gonna do an arm, and then I'm gonna do the other arm. Try to prevent those hard edges from drying, just like you would with a regular wash to get uh, to avoid those coffee stains and harsh transition lines. Be thorough, work continuously. Don't take a break in the middle of applying your contrast paint layer. It's uh, not a good idea. Now, if you're doing different colors, that's different, but if you're doing the entire model, you wanna do it all in one go. At about the midway point, this is when I start to look at the undersides of things and check the areas that I've done before just to see how things are progressing. The paint's gonna start to have dried a little bit, and as you can see, it's getting lighter in the areas on the top of the torso where I started, but you just wanna make sure there's not any little cracks and crevices that have got like sharp white or in this case gray contrast showing where the paint didn't actually cover. It's not the end of the world if you don't get them all, it's just easier to fix them now. If you find an area that it pooled up and you're not happy with it, for instance, mine was the tops of the arms on the Marauder there, it started to pool up. You can go back, apply some more contrast paint to the area, move the paint around gently, and it'll reactivate the still curing paint. You can then wick away that on the paper towel or you can even apply more and then do the same process as you pull it and, and push the paint away and continue to wick it away so it doesn't pool up. I try to not do this too much if I don't have to, but don't think it's the end of the world if you've got a big dark spot and you can't do anything about it. It's just, it is what it is. It's not gonna be that way. So a lot of people don't recognize that on contrast paints, but it is something you can do if you absolutely need to. I will say this, if you're going to just do the contrast paint and not continue on with the dry brush steps lit follow, I recommend you probably stick with a white or very, very light gray primer as the base coat. I'd also possibly recommend you get the technical contrast paint medium and thin it to maybe a four to one or a three to one basilicanum gray to, to medium ratio. And the reason I say that is while it is going to lighten up, it's still going to be fairly dark. And if you're not going to do the follow on dry brushing, which although is going to highlight the edges, it does bring up the overall brightness of the miniature because you do a coverage dry brushing, it's going to be a little bit darker probably than you'd want. So that might help you in the long run, especially if you're doing tons and tons of these miniatures and you just don't want to spend the time to do the dry brushing or you're just happy with how the camouflage looks with just the wash and the kind of the griminess. That's fine. I'm just saying consider thinning that that paint, the con contrast paint out a little bit. It might do you a little bit more favors with regards to that. Once you've finished applying the contrast paint, you really need to let it dry for at least an hour. I tend to go even longer just because I don't want to find a, a wet area and a joint or something like that as I'm dry brushing and street paint all over everything. But you can set it aside and work on something else. Uh, you can use a hair dryer if you want, but be careful about blowing paint around. You just want to make sure it's fully dry before you start to dry brush. And here's what it looks like after it's dried completely and it definitely lightened up quite a bit, but it did fill in the recesses with some dark shades. Now I'm going to go back to that original wolf gray that I did my base coat with and I'm going to grab my handy dandy eye makeup brush. It's a round soft brush. I'm going to load it up as I would when I dry brush with anything else and then deload the brush on the paper towel and I'm going to lightly start to apply and I'm going to lightly start to apply this wolf gray. I'm working mostly in a top to bottom motion. 
I want to catch those raised edges on the high sides of things first. This is a gentle pressure application. I'm not really trying to force the paint anywhere. As I continue, I'm looking for areas to work perpendicular to any panel lines if possible. And then if I have to, I'll work laterally and, and highlight things from side to side. You may end up needing to highlight from the bottom a little bit just to catch a couple of edges here and there, and that's perfectly okay. But the primary focus should be working from a downward motion. I recommend you do the entire model and then reassess as you go to see areas that you may want to enhance further. That way you don't end up with one really bright arm and then you go to the other side and it's nowhere near as, as highlighted. Or maybe you're happy with one side and you look back and you went too much on the other. So I will show you a quick trick of how to get away with removing some. Now it won't get all of it, but it will take it down a little bit. So if you get a little too much on there, you can use the technique I'll show you here how to remove some to help yourself out. Even though you're dry brushing, the paint is still going to have to cure a little bit and it will mute out slightly. So it's, it's a much more subtle effect, but trust me, do the whole model, take a look, see what you like, see any areas that you want to reattack and get a little bit brighter, or maybe some areas that you might have missed, and then go in for that second or maybe even third, depending on how much dry brushing you want to do, attempt to, to bring things out. I am trying to avoid the metallic areas, but I'm not concerned if I hit them a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but I'm not specifically targeting just the, the primary metallic areas. You can see now that after a couple of passes with the dry brushing, it's definitely gotten more of a lighter tone. The edges are sharper because they've been defined by the grays. And now I'm going to take a look and see if there's any areas that I need to maybe go back on and undo. But before I do that, I'm going to add some red details to match the cover art. There were some small stripes around the ends of the arms and the traditional Canon correct scheme for the commands units in the Grey Death Legion has a red circle on the lower right leg for the command designation. So I'm going to paint those in. I'm using my Scarlet and I'm also using my double zero Kalinsky brush. I've added a slight amount of water to the paint, even though it's a air specific paint. I like to just have a little bit of extra thinness to it. It's not runny, but it does keep me from having it dry too much on the brush while I paint. I did switch over to the right side just because it's easier to see on camera. I had already painted the left. I'm taking my time, I'm pulling towards myself, working in the short sections here, trying to connect each line. If you don't have as fine of a brush and you still want to put the stripes on, that's perfectly okay. Use the best brush you have with the finest point. It doesn't necessarily need to be the smallest brush. Once you get the stripes completed, if you wish, you can go back and maybe take a red tone that's brighter than the dark red that you used and do a thin highlight to the overall red colors, but it will mean you have to go over the stripes again. So if you don't want to do that, don't do it. But I ended up doing that, so later on you'll see the stripes are a little bit brighter. As I was looking at it, I noticed the top side of the left torso on top of the mech here has got a little bit of an area that's too bright, just too much dry brushing. So I've got these makeup Q-tips. They're not a traditional cotton swab, but uh, they're a little bit firmer. I've just moistened it in some water, and now I'm going to gently rub the area, the edge, back and forth to help remove some of that buildup. You can actually work the flat panel towards the edge if you don't want to take it completely off. It's almost like taking, you know, just like you would take if you were taking paint thinner or whatever and trying to remove paint from a, a raised panel. Uh, but you do need to be gentle and also keep in mind that the edges of the plastic miniatures may catch some of the fibers on the Q-tips. So you might have some cleanup to do. It might also be real messy depending on the types of swabs you have. But this is an option for you to use to remove some of those dry brushed areas that maybe just didn't quite make it. And now I finished the model. I have finished the base, added a couple of decals and the PPC glow and jeweling effects on the lasers and canopy and you can see this really just ties together really well. I went with a brighter color on the base to contrast the gray and as you can see it really makes the rest of that miniature stand out. So for not a lot of work you get a really great effect using the contrast paint and overall you can touch it up and make it your own style as you go. That's all from me, Tex, do your thing. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Heat critical. Shutdown imminent. Time for Pop-Tarts. <laughs>